Okay. Welcome to our lecture online. For us to understand electromagnetic radiation better, we have to talk about the wave basics. What is a wave and what does it do? So first of all, what we want to do here is talk about a very simple equation that the velocity of a wave is equal to the frequency times its wavelength. So all waves will travel, ocean waves travel across the ocean, electromagnetic radiation travels through space, and all waves will have a certain velocity. In the case of electromagnetic radiation, that velocity happens to be the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second, 186,000 miles per second, or sometimes we write as 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Notice I'm not using many significant figures here, it's actually 2.997 or something like that, but for us, that's good enough. 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, what do we mean by the frequency? What do we mean by the wavelength? So imagine here we have a wave that's traveled from left to right at some velocity, let's say speed of light. And since we have a wave, we have what we call peaks or crests and valleys or troughs. And it turns out that the distance from one peak of the wave to the next peak of the wave, that's called a wavelength. That's the length of the wave. That gives us one complete wave. It doesn't matter where you start. You could start here and then end over here. That would be the same thing. Or you could start down here and end down there. So it doesn't matter where you start. When you get to the same point of the next wave, that's called a wavelength. And so we can then measure how long that is, and that will be the length of the wave for that particular electromagnetic radiation. The frequency of the wave is the number of times the wave goes up and down as it passes you by. So let's say there's an observer right here, watches the wave go by, and we measure the number of times the wave up, goes up and down in one second. Of course, with electromagnetic radiation, that would not be humanly possible. You couldn't count that much because in the case of visible light, the frequency is 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. 600 trillion times per second does the wave go up and down in one second as it passes by. That's a lot of vibration. That's a lot of that's a very high frequency. But just for the sake of argument, let's say we could count them and the wave passes by and we go one, two, three, four, five, six, a second goes by, that's how many waves travel past us. So another way of looking at it is the number of waves or wavelengths that passes by in a second, that would be the frequency. And it turns out that the frequency multiplied times its wavelength always gives us the velocity of the wave. So we can then take that, and of course, instead of V, we can simply put in C, which represents speed of light. And if we then take this equation and then solve that for the frequency, the frequency would then be C divided by lambda when we bring lambda down here. So C divided by lambda. In the case of visible light, that would be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And for light, let's say the average uh, wavelength might be about 500 nanometers. That would be 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And if we take that division, we get, let's see, that divided by that, we'll get exactly that number right there. 6 times 10 to the 14th, that would be meters cancel out, 1 over seconds. So the 1 over seconds unit is another way of writing hertz. It's the frequency. So we can write this as 6 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So hertz is the same as 1 over seconds, or cycles per second, or waves per second. That would be the frequency. And so you can see that this equation allows us to figure out the frequency, figures out, let's, allows us to figure out the wavelength or the velocity if the other two are known. And in any wave, no matter what it is, these three are always related to each other like that. Knowing that is very, very handy because that way, when we, of course, are given something like the radio wavelength, uh, then from that we can figure out the frequency. Or if we're given the radio frequency, we can figure out from that the wavelength. And that's how we can get some more information about the electromagnetic radiation that we're observing from space to try and figure out what's happening out there. So knowing these basics will help us understand electromagnetic radiation.